The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 150 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. I'm your host, Derek Young, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, who'd have thought episode 120, 150, we'd be stuck here in uh, in quarantine still? Yeah, the the highly quarantined podcast <laughs> that we're that we're doing. Yes, oh. um, I remember how exciting it was when we got to episode 100. Yeah. I like hitting the mi- I like hitting the milestone numbers. Yeah, this one doesn't and, uh, seem as exciting just because of the circumstances. No, we should be right no, in the know, meat yeah. of the season right now. We should be really excited about how it's going. And yeah, yeah, we were on a nice little train and then. <sighs> crash yeah no yep. good that's all right yep we're making it we're surviving man somehow we are surviving um so we have we went back i racing this weekend and nobody got suspended um nobody got lost sponsors nobody got fired so that's good right yeah i mean sort of that happened it, i i i was reading a little bit earlier that it appears one of the drivers may have retired from i racing did you see that i didn't see that i did see uh bobby labani got a got ferrari as a sponsor nice uh, for the iraq racing he's doing or something but nice. that's the only thing i was like huh positive news out of i racing this is good yeah i was <laughs> reading that bubba wallace retired from i racing today well he did the polish victory lap and yep. uh did a wave to the crowd and that was very nice yep yep so good good out good for him so i racing was at the virtual richmond raceway this past weekend um i watched it as i've watched all of them so far um, I will say, James, that the racing was much better this weekend. Uh, Nat, I racing, so I racing is as flip flop with the format multiple times. Like every week on this thing, it's different. Uh, that's one of the complaints that Jeff Gluck has that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes. Um, but uh, they they flipped in the right direction this week. They got rid of the the full reset, so nobody was allowed to get a full reset. Um, the first race they were allowed like three and then they dropped it to two. And I think the week before it was one, but no reset. So that was nice because everybody was a lot more conservative with their runs and not doing stupid things. Cause they didn't want to be stuck out of the race. They wanted to actually race. Um, mm-hmm. so that was nice. It, it, we had, it went green in the beginning. Um, we had a long green flag run and then we had a couple of cautions stacked on top of each other. But for the most part, the racing was good. Um, you know, I really thoroughly enjoyed the Richmond race. I was thinking throughout the Richmond race that this race is better than most of the Richmond races have been lately. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gluck wrote about it and, and it got me all riled up, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so racing was much better. William Byron gets his second I racing pro invitational win in a row. Um, so coming out of the, you know, he's, he's dominated the whole thing so far. He's just gotten bumped out of the way. Timmy Hill was coming up. Trying to get to his back bumper at the end, but wasn't able to do it. So William Byron gets the win. Um, Matt De Benedetto got thrown out for rough driving. I don't remember who he was wrecking with now at this point, but he was running into somebody else. It's kind of interesting the tempers that are still going on these things. It wasn't Chris Bell, was it? Was that or that was that was, that was a different thing? And I don't think it was. I can't yeah, remember. I Maybe it was think, Christopher I it was Bell. Been, I don't know. I can't. I don't think so. I I only watched the high. I only watched the highlights, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, word is Matt DiMenedetto was wearing a giraffe costume, so he got suspended. He was. I did see that. He yeah. got kicked out of the iRacing race with a giraffe costume, so. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I, it's not a whole lot to talk about it. It's, it was it was a decent race. Again, it's it's iRacing. It's what, uh, what we've got right now. James, you said you watched the highlights. You haven't sat down and actually watched one, right? I haven't. No, I did try to watch a replay once, and I made it, I think – five minutes. So I have, was, I have a question for you before we start talking about Gluck here. Um, what, what is it that keeps you from doing it? Like what, what is it? I, what is it that bothers you? Cause something is, I mean, I, I let's, let's preface this too, that I don't think you tend to sit down and watch a full regular race either lately. Generally you kind of do other things while you're watching a race, right? Yeah. I'm kind of a multitasker, but I will, the, the thing with the with uh, a real quote unquote real NASCAR race, I know we're t- trying to decipher between real and virtual now, um, <laughs> but a real NASCAR race uh, for me is I get it on, and you know I think you probably understand this as well when you have a young family and there's lots of stuff going on that you you know it's it's tough to 
sit down for three hours to watch a full race. No, I tell everybody get away from me and leave. So me alone yeah, and I just, yeah, yeah. I turn the TV. I do that every time somebody's talking the in the room. I turn the TV up a couple notches louder. Yeah, there un- you go. Until it gets unbearable and everybody kind of gets the hint. Yeah, they never yeah. get the hint. Ever yeah. get the hint. I I would say my I average watch seventy five percent of every race that's on. Um, sometimes it's a little less and sometimes it's more, it's more, but um, I'm always there for the for the big stuff. I don't. And that's, I usually that's don't cup race, the, right? Yeah, yeah, that's most of the cup race, and then I like to peek in on the trucks and Xfinity uh, from time to time. Um, you know, if they're racing at Daytona or you know Eldora for the trucks, I don't miss. Um, things like that, but I'm usually I'm usually poking in on those. But yeah, for the cup races, I'm watching for the the, the majority. I'm watching most of it. So what is it about iRacing racing that makes it just not appeal to you? I just I I can't pinpoint what it is. I just know that it's not real NASCAR racing, and I it doesn't interest me. It's still it's real like, racing though, it, with the real drivers. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just I'm trying to understand because I don't. I would rather be watching the real thing. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. I yeah. would rather watch a boring, real NASCAR race than a really exciting, fake NASCAR here's, race. Here's what catches my attention: it's the old stuff that NASCAR is pushing out. It's the highlight, the the full race re, you know, the the full race replays of the See, '82 I, Talladega. I can't watch race. that. See, yeah, yeah, and I don't know what, the, and maybe that's just something that you know, maybe that's, maybe that's the the history buff in me a little bit. That yeah, but you that. know me, I love the history, but I can't sit down and watch an old race like that. And I, I won't watch the entire old race. I'll say that, but I love seeing that stuff. And I, I do tune in when it's on, you know, if it's on the Facebook feed or something, I'll, I'll have it running, you yeah. know? Um, it's interesting. But for me, yeah. For me, it's like the iRacing racing stuff just isn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. I just get in, instantly bored and I, it, and it and it's just not it's like watching i don't know i don't want to call i don't want to say like watching paint dry but it's like watching a discipline of racing that just doesn't interest me hmm. you know i don't know it's that's, just not that's interesting it's not the real thing see cuz i sat down and maybe maybe it's because i don't know i don't know i, I don't know what it is but so i this weekend i sat down and watched the entire indycar race from Twin Ring Mutigi or however you pronounce it, I watched the entire. I watched it. No, did I watch that live? No, I think I watched the Indy Race delayed. I sat and watched the entire Saturday night Saturday night at Thunder um, from Richmond, and then I tuned in the next day. That was live, and I tuned in the next day and watched the entire now Richmond race live. My my question to you is: You yeah. are somebody who is very interested in eye racing, and you don't have a rig. That's what I was but, wondering: is if that maybe is it that yeah, because I have the interest in eye racing too. But and I, that's the thing is, I I know that. Listen, I would love to try. I I would love to try a sim, and and I would love to I would love to have one and and run it. But yeah. I just. It's not something that's going to be a become a hobby of mine. I have too many other things that I want to do that it well, don't that's, involve. That's why I haven't gotten involved in it because I would want to commit a ton of time to it. Yeah, but I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, and and I and I, don't, I hope people who hear this don't get me wrong. Like I'm just trying to poo poo all of this stuff. It's right. not. That's not it. No, you're I, not. I love, you're, you're not. Jeff Gluck is, but you're not. Yeah, I, I like. <laughs> I love the iRacing platform. I love what what it does for the sport and for those who are playing i racing and and I, I say i and my word choices also might not be great but who can who compete on i racing let's say or it's a hobby of yours um more power to you man i love that stuff i used to play all the old nascar games when i was growing up and uh, i mean i'll still pop on the xbox the old xbox and i'll put in an old nascar game from time to time i love playing that stuff i still you know still feel nostalgic over it i, I really enjoy it it's just this isn't I rather spend my time if I'm going to sit down and watch something, I'd rather invest in something that to me is a real thing, I guess. Like I went full deep into the Bulls documentary on ESPN, The Last Dance, and I was just and I know it's old and we all know how the story goes, but that stuff fascinated me and like that's the kind of things in sports i'm looking forward to right now the i racing stuff just doesn't do it for me see i just love racing and and i sure yeah i, I, will, I get that I, I will honestly say that if they continue to do this once real nascar starts up i won't turn it on 
But yeah, for yeah. me right now, this is what's giving me that racing fix. This is, yeah. and I'm not watching it with annoyance or even going, even sitting down and going, God, I wish this was real because it's, it's something it's competition. Yeah. You know, the drivers for the most part, other than some in the back are taking it seriously. And so it's enjoyable to me. <clears throat> Bristol was a little less enjoyable because there were so many wrecks. Um, but for the most part, it's been really enjoyable. So I wanted to, sure. I wanted to, to talk about Jeff Gluck's column here for those of you who don't subscribe to the athletic, um, and don't get to read Jeff's stuff anymore. I highly recommend that you subscribe to the athletic, do some searching for some deals. I'm sure there's a deal on a subscription. There always is. Um, I don't know right now because I am a subscriber. I was a subscriber to Jeff before, um, before he switched to the athletic. And because of that, I got free access to the athletic, but I'll continue to subscribe to the athletic. I believe, uh, once that free, uh, deal runs out. It's a, it's a great site. It's the nice thing about it. The athletic is that, um, they cover things that are different from what your other sports things covered. That's something that they every, preach there. Yeah. They, they instruct there and Jeff's expressed some frustration over it because he doesn't go to the track and cover things like he used to. They want him doing something different, something that brings something unique. Um, this is not an advertisement for the athletic. I don't care that <laughs> I have nothing affiliated with them whatsoever, but I think it's a great site as somebody who is a journalist to see a site that's getting, asking people to pay for journalism is awesome. Um, and I have a ton of respect for Jeff Gluck and I'm going to, I'm going to rip on him a little bit in this co- about this column, but I still respect Jeff Gluck a lot. Well, um, heck man, you and I rip on each other. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're fine. It's not, there's, exactly. there's no vitriol here. It's just a, it's just opinion. You know? I, I love Jeff. I think if it wasn't for Jeff, we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast. You're um, probably right about that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, Jeff was the one that did the podcast and we went, Oh yeah, we could do that and yeah. decided to do it. So, um, but okay, I'm going to read some of this again, please go subscribe to the athletic Uh, I'm hoping that Jeff isn't upset with me for reading some of this that is behind a paywall. Um, Let's see here. I'm trying to find, I guess I should have prepared ahead of time. Um, Let's see. And he did, I'll filibuster for you for a second. Um, You know, and if you're not subscribing to the athletic, um, there's lots of good things that come with it. But one of the things is Jeff and Jordan Bianchi, who's really great in his own right. He's a newsbreaker. Mm-hmm. Um, in his own right, they host the podcast, the teardown. Um, and as an athletic subscriber, you get access to more podcasts, but even if you're not, um, go to Apple podcasts and look for the teardown and e- each week you get one free podcast. So it hits your feed just like it would hit ours. And they do good work there as well. If you're, if you're listening to NASCAR podcasts, um, that's another good one to, to go and listen to is, is what Jeff and Jordan do. And, and I, I think very highly of Jordan as well. Yes. Um, they're doing it. They're both doing great work and and Jordan's been doing great work for a long time. And I'm glad that he's found a good home with the athletic. It seems like they're doing well, uh, up until this whole crisis happened. They, you know, they were kind of cruising along there for the last year. Um, so Jeff writes, I can't cover the E-NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series events the same way as real races anymore. It makes me feel guilty to say that because a lot of people have worked hard to make iRacing on television a suitable replacement for actual racing during the coronavirus created hiatus. Everyone needs some positive distractions. These races seem to fit the bill at first, but after four of these things, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. We gave it a shot for a while. The first few weeks, I treated the Pro Invitational Series events much the same as any other race. A a virtual pre-race tweet-up, in-race tweets, a post-race podcast, this post-race column, and even a quiet track picture. With real-life NASCAR on pause, I selfishly wanted to cover the e-NASCAR races like actual ones instead of just a video game. Why not? We all need content, right? Um, so he says he's filled with optimism after the first couple of races, uh, that they could be a substitute for the real thing, but they weren't the same. Um, I want, I'm not sure what changed with something did. Actually, I don't think it's one thing specifically. It's just the real life. It's not just the real life consequences of Kyle Larson's racial slur or Bubba Wallace's rage quitting slash sponsor blow up. It's not just the constant format changes or the politics of deciding who gets invited to race and who doesn't. It's not just the novelty wearing off. Perhaps it's all of the above. Um, the bottom line is I just couldn't generate the same enthusiasm for t- Sunday's race. It bums me out because people will view me as negative again or dumping on the series when I really did try to embrace it. Other racing reporters will keep up the coverage and I will encourage you to read their work. If you're interested, we all need the support right now. 
Um, but if I were to keep covering these events the same way as real races, it would be disingenuous. I could be, I would just be faking enthusiasm and being a total phony. All right. The rest of it, guys, go to athletic, the athletic.com subscribe, read the column. It's a great column. That a boy, Jeff. I like it. (laughs) That being said, here's my problem with Jeff's point of view. Um, Jeff has every right to his point of view. James, you have every right to your point of view. I get it that some people just don't like this. Can't get into it. Whatever. Totally understand. My problem is if you're going into this, trying to treat it like the real thing, you're going to be disappointed. That's not what this is. Yep. This is not the real thing. I'm not fooling myself. I'm not uh, guys. If you put Timmy Hill in the same car that William Byron is racing on Sunday in a real NASCAR race, Timmy Hill's not going to run up front. I get it. This is different. Not nothing against Timmy Hill. Timmy Hill's a great driver. I'm sure he's got a ton of skill, but he excels at this because this is something that he's been able to, to be good at and compete on a level playing field where he has put in the cup time car. in. Yeah. Put the time if, in to be good. If he at got it. the time to put into a good car in the cup series, he'd yes, probably be able to eventually, but he's not going to off the bat. We're seeing different names up front. We're seeing different people competing. Kyle Bush. How many times have we talked about how great of a driver he is? He he's sucks coming, at this. He yeah, is coming. He's coming. He yeah. is coming, but he sucks. But- <laughs> Jimmy yeah. Johnson is terrible at this. Absolutely terrible, but it's fun to watch. It's entertainment. Don't cover it like the real thing. That's one thing that I'll give Fox credit for in their broadcast is they haven't. They do some of the stuff. That there's enough of the real NASCAR feel there to where it kind of almost feels normal, but there's enough of the recognizing that it's not real that makes it work. And yeah. I mean, don't, don't, come into it with this point of view that it's a replacement. It's not, it's something to do right now. We've got, I'm having a chance to, to see sort of interact through TV with my favorite drivers week in and week out that I wouldn't be able to, they're getting a chance to keep up on their skills, get some practice, get some seat time in no matter how different it is. And we get to watch it on TV and, and have something to do on Sunday. It's a technological marvel. I mean, it is. With, the, with the Twitch stuff and things that well, are coming in. The the fact that they could, they have onboard shots in the driver's living room and that it's synced up. So I noticed on Sunday, <coughs> I watched, uh, I was, I was, when it went to commercial, I switched over to a couple of the live feeds on Twitter and they were almost matched up perfectly. So yeah. you could jump from one feet to the other and not miss out on stuff. And it was great because you could sit there and watch that on board at the same time as the TV broadcast. And- I was reading today that uh, there is, is there room? Basically the article was, is there, and, and I'm sorry, I can't remember where I saw this, but um, is there room for Twitch in, in real NASCAR? Yeah. Um, so that is kind of an exciting thing where, you know, possibly down the line, you know, this platform that, and Eric, the numbers show that younger people are tuning into this. Right. And who may not even be like NASCAR fans per se, that they just like iRacing. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we're drawing an audience here that well, could we, translate. I, I'm always skeptical on the, on the translation numbers. Um, but we're seeing, we're seeing some signs here where it's not all, you know, all negative. These this races are drawing pretty good, pretty good numbers. When you throw a Twitch race up or Twitch broadcast up on or broadcast up on Twitch, one of these races, and it's getting 50,000 viewers mm-hmm. that unless you're PewDiePie, sorry <laughs> guys that don't know who PewDiePie is. Oh, that's a lot. That, I actually know that that's even an old reference. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not him, you're not drawing those numbers on Twitch. That race <laughs> is automatically going to go to the top of the charts. It's going to be a, a featured event on Twitch every time. And that's bringing eyes to our sport that have never been on our sport before. And look, more power to Jeff. I, I don't want him covering this if he doesn't enjoy it. That's That would just be a waste of time for Beat him. It would be a waste of time for us. He's right. It, it, would be, it would be disingenuous. Well, and he's not wrong either on some of his points that he made and, and just the snippets that you were reading. Um, something has happened this was a lot of fun. Yeah, the first it's, it's less times. fun on the inside now um, than it used but, to be. You know, I, what what do I always say about NASCAR when they find a good thing? What right. do they What do they <laughs> exactly. always do? Yeah, they beat it into the ground, and I'm starting to feel the this has gotten beaten to the ground a little bit because they can't settle on you know formatting, and obviously the drivers can't behave themselves. We've got a couple of instances of that, and it's just I you know. 
I even found it kind of, even though I wasn't tuning in to watch, I'm like, Hey, this is a great idea. And then after mm-hmm. the second week, I'm like, Holy cow, this is this thing. It's not for me, but Holy cow, it's working. And then all of a sudden you start to see some of the negative spin and then things got really out of hand. Right. Um, last week with, you know, the, and that's not, <laughs> that is nothing. Right. To, that's not an eye racing problem. What happened last week? That's a, that's a human problem. Yeah. And it wasn't um, even, it wasn't even the pro invitational series. Yeah. It wasn't even the pro invitational series. <laughs> it was just that, you know, these guys having fun online, but yep. while well, they were, they were trying to, but yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's definitely like, you know, sometimes NASCAR finds these little gems and every once in a while they won't ruin it. Like out the Eldora truck series race is still a nicely fine tuned gem. They've, they've they tried had. to ruin it a couple times. They've tried, but it's <laughs> so still, far. it's yeah, it's still in, in pretty pristine condition. It's not perfect. This, yet. this like past year be. was the the best they've done it ruining it, but yeah, so far they've they tried. haven't yet. They've tried. They haven't ruined the Roval yet, but, right. but mark my words, they're going to find a way. Yeah. So, they, <laughs> so they, it's just one of those things that happens. Um, yeah. But you know, it's, uh, I, I respect Jeff's opinion as well. And I think him and I share some of the same feelings, but I also disagree with, with some of it too. Cause it's not all bad. And I agree with you a hundred percent. Like, don't take this seriously. If you're mm. going to watch it, just have fun watching it. We got to see Dale Earnhardt jr. Race an IndyCar race last week. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. At that's, Michigan. Yeah. Which is cool. That's not going to happen in real life. You know, Kyle Busch raced the IndyCar race in, in, uh, Japan. Yep. He's not going to Japan to run an Indy car race, folks. <laughs> it's not going to yeah. happen. We might someday get to see Kyle Busch run Indy. Um, but that's it, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing is we're getting, so Dale Jr. is out of retirement right now, racing NASCAR. Yeah. You know, Jeff Gordon's coming out of retirement this weekend. Breaking news guys, Jeff Gordon's racing Talladega this weekend. That's a, that's fantastic. So, I mean, we're getting to see things we wouldn't have gotten to see. Uh, enjoy it for what it is. It's not. Yeah, and if you're fans, if you're fans of these guys, why wouldn't you want to tune in and just be like, "Hey, man, Jeff Gordon's right. gonna try doing this." And maybe, don't watch it as a as a Jeff Gordon race. Just be like, "Hey, man, that's cool. That you know, that's yeah. that's my guy. That's Jeff Gordon. I get to watch him. You know, kind of do this fun thing." Well, and Jeff's on Fox. You know, he's gonna get the Clint Boyer treatment where he's gonna have 15 voices in his ear. He's gonna be all mic'd up in the studio and. It'll be entertaining. So yeah, Talladega might be one that I have to just check out because yeah. that could be that could be good. I think it's going to be really good. Dale Jr.'s got a video, or I think it was on his Twitter, of him missing a wreck uh, the other night in the replacements race at Talladega, and it was like the parting of the Red Seas. It was so amazing, and he was shocked that he missed this wreck. It's, it's excellent. <laughs> So, um, yeah, if he, wins one of, good. if he wins one of these things, is Junior Nation going to rise oh, up from the ashes? It's going to be good stuff, man. I want to see it happen. I want to see it happen. I want to see more new winners. I, again, I, I love this. I, it's, it's, it's not a replacement, but it's something to watch right now. I tell you what guys, I don't have a lot to look forward to right now. And I look forward to, I, many of us don't, I've expressed this to my wife that I want to be able to be at the TV during these races, because it is the one thing during the week I get to look forward to right now. And and <clears throat> that's yeah, and that's a really great point because we all have to have at least that one thing. Mm-hmm. And I have mine, and you know, I I know hopefully other people have theirs too. But we're all stuck inside. It, the weather's crappy in Michigan. Yep, it's been terrible. And when we do get outside, it's freezing and or windy or it's crap. It's just crap. Yep. And <laughs> all there is to do is to work and then work around the house. Like. Right. <laughs> What is what? That's not fun. No. Uh, th- and that's why I was so I, I got so geeked up that they that ESPN did this documentary on the Michael Jordan Bulls because I'm like, oh, my God, this is something new, new footage. Nobody's ever seen it before. I can't wait. This is something that I and like I am watching this. Do not come near me. And I get it, man. If this is your thing, enjoy it. Soak it in. Have fun with it. And let it be that band aid for you until you get the real thing back. Yep. And damn it, Jeff, quit being freaking negative. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just had to get it in there. <laughs> Poor Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I give did, him. He really did give it a try, though, because Jeff was Jeff was negative Nancy on iRacing stuff way before this. He yeah. was kind of he kind of built the island of negative <laughs> iRacing opinion. And then, you know, he came around and he was like having fun watching it. 
And then the Bubba thing happened, and then the Larson thing, and then he's not having fun anymore. Look, I can't watch NASCAR Heat. It's stupid. It's a video game. But this oh, doesn't terrible. feel like a video game to me. It's realistic enough that I can enjoy it. Don't worry. They they took care of every everybody uh, having um, you know a nice view of the racing with the stupid cars that they're designing with the. <laughs> it's not. Listen, people, for and for the car, the next gen car coming out. Keep the numbers on the door panels. I knew it's all I asked. I knew if I, I put it out there, I'd give you a chance to get in there. And I get that don't big care what you do to the cup cars as long as you keep the numbers where they're supposed to be. I, I, it I don't mind a eyes, couple man. of the designs, but as long that number needs to be on the door. It needs to be on the door. They it's can not shrink a it. They can move car. it on the door, but leave it on the door. It's not a NASCAR race car unless it's got numbers slapped on the door and the roof. Yep. Leave my just leave it alone. Some yep. things don't change. Like everything can change, but some things, you know, just you don't have to tweak it. James, do you know why the number on the roof of the cup cars faces the infield? I do. I thought I did, but I do not. Enlighten. It is because of the old days when they would hand score the cars. Oh. The scorers would sit in the infield and they would score the cars and they need to see the numbers on the roof pointing toward them. I always wondered why they faced inward, I yep. guess would be. Yeah. Yep, they've never huh. changed it. You'll see a lot at short tracks and stuff like that. A lot of them face towards the fans because that's who sees the numbers. I remember being a kid and there would be die casts. And sometimes they would admit, and every once in a while you'll see a die cast get misprinted. Yeah, and like the numbers facing the wrong see, way. Yeah, and I always yeah. would notice that stuff. Like, that number's not right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even though it's, you know, <laughs> the minor detail. But, oh, well, there you go. A... I got educated today. Oh. Huh. Yeah, my Twitter feed right now is just these NASCAR heat cars, and it's really annoying. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah. it. I mean, when ASA did it, I hated it. I hated it so much. Yeah. And it's just, no. No, the number should not be on the rear quarter panel. It needs to be on the, yeah. So if the you need any other there, reasons to not watch NASCAR Heat, that's another one for you. I think they did this last year, though, too. Yeah. To, to be fair. I, and, I gave up on NASCAR Heat a while ago. I'm sorry. It just is a terrible game. Well, just watch the championship race from last year's Pro Series, and that's all you'll need to know. <laughs> How bad that was. Huh. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, James, we got some real NASCAR news. Oh, oh boy. Real NASCAR news. Let's, real let's, news. let's see how we're going to discuss this. Good stuff. So there is talk. There's been a lot of talk recently that uh, the real thing is coming back very soon. Supposedly, that is the plan. Um, there are some states that do not have stay at home orders. Uh, one of those being South Carolina which could very well be the first race back. The talk is to run uh, Darlington the week before or weekend before Memorial Day and then go to Charlotte on Memorial Day weekend and follow up with Atlanta Motor Speedway. This is courtesy of Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic. Um, apparently, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the talk has been um, teams want to be within driving distance so they don't have to fly, um, understandably so. So NASCAR is looking at a lot of tracks around the Charlotte area right now within a couple hours of Charlotte. So those ones are starting to ring a bell. Can we get North Wilkesboro back on the schedule? Yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? I I'm saw somebody I saw somebody go crazy about that the other day. and Mo Moody was all over it today. That's the only reason I said it. <laughs> he was He's fed up with the North Wilkesboro talk. So. Right. Um, obviously, Rockingham? Pe people are, Rockingham yeah, back. Yeah, Rockingham could. People are excited because no fans will be permitted at these races. So we don't need fan amenities to be able to run a race at, you know, North Wilkesboro, for example, but sorry guys, North Wilkesboro. Yeah, it's not happening. Sorry. There's guys. so much work that we'll need to go into that place. Can you imagine, first of all, there's no safer barriers there guys. So that's, it's not going to happen period because of that. And I guarantee you, there's one no of those way concrete to do walls it. It just can't. crumble. Yeah. There's it's no terrible. way to do it. It's yeah. so, yeah. So uh, it's a nice so dream. You guys get to race at night racing here in a couple months. Yep. Um, but yeah, Rockingham might be a possibility. That'd be interesting. I think it's. I think Rockingham actually might be in pretty bad shape now too, if I'm not mistaken. Is but it a possibility? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to dive in a little bit, but it's yeah. not been taken care of for a little bit. Well, I know there's always pictures of the, of the infield like six feet tall and stuff, but yeah, they've always said that before that they could just cut that and bail it and it'd be done. It's just grass, no big deal. Yeah, so. yeah. Um. But yeah, so looking like we're going to see some racing without fans for a while, I would assume that that's going to be for the foreseeable future. I can't imagine we're going to be packing hundreds of thousands of people into the stands at any track or tens of thousands of people in any, any stands at any point in the in the near future. 
Yeah. Um, which is disappointing, but at least we'll get to watch it on TV. So what do you think, James? Uh, you think mid-May makes sense to come back racing? Do you want Do you want NASCAR to be the first ones to do this? <laughs> well, they might not be because Major League Baseball wants to do it, too. Yeah, but here's Supercross thing. is is uh, supposedly coming back. They're going to race. They're going to close off the uh, the dome in Arizona and just race every remaining round of the Supercross in that dome. Can they? Are they going to reconfigure the track each time? I think. I believe so. I believe oh, that's, that's fantastic! That's yeah. See, motocross, you could do it. Yeah. But here's the difference between NASCAR and all the other. What the all, all the other sports are talking about this. Uh, the NHL, I think, put the put the kibosh on it today. Okay. Um. But the NBA, they are trying to figure out how they're going to get their playoffs in. Um, and baseball, baseball is talking about doing the bubble. And that's mm-hmm. what the NBA wants to do, too. They want to take a couple of arenas and they want to do a bubble. Yep. When you're traveling from state to state, you're not really doing a bubble. Right. You can silo the track, but you still got people coming in and out. You're coming into contact with people that you're, you know, that are from that area. I don't. I, as much as I want racing back, I really, really do. Cause I can't, <laughs> I don't want to do any more. I racing focus podcast, <laughs> but I don't think it's a good idea just yet. I don't know if you agree, Eric, but I just think we should not be rushing into this. And it's still, it feels like this is rushing into it, even though it seems like it's not, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. We're we're not the WWE just in Florida <laughs> having events, you know? Right. It's not the same thing. It, 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 it's a lot of people in one area. So a couple of other things that have been floated to make this work is um, limiting staff at the track, um, shortening races, and yep. potentially running without pit stops. Yeah, no live pit stops, yes. Which would be interesting. Um, I totally okay with that. Um, whatever gets us going sooner, but I'm with you. I, you know, we want it back. We really do. Like you and I are starving for our when it's, when it's back, I'm turning the TV on. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I'm oh, certainly yeah. not going to boycott them because of decisions no, they make I'm, or I'm, anything no, like that. I will not. be, I will be all over it, but man, I, I don't know. I'd really hate to, it makes you feel a tad hypocritical. Doesn't it? Cause yeah. I would do the same thing. I would, like yes live sports i don't care what you know i yeah i want to see my racing back i want to see my i want to see my basketball back i want racing back and hell i even miss baseball (laughs) and i haven't said that in 10 years yeah i might even watch a baseball game right now if if it was on and it was new yeah yeah i know um heck i might even watch basketball james if the nba playoffs got going i would be pretty ecstatic (laughs) it would be great I, I, w- I definitely want racing back. Um, I will say that I have made zero travel plans for this summer. Um, you can't. Yeah, you uh, can. First of all, unless this is going away, A, if they're limiting media at the track, I'm not getting in anyway. Um, yeah. B, I really don't have a whole lot of intentions of traveling until I feel safe doing it. So yeah. um, th- this very well may be a year of no uh, no on-track coverage for the, uh, the super speedway. Um I don't know. I, you know, it's tough. The, the thing that gives me hope, James, is that things change so quickly with this whole deal. Yeah. You know, we went from, I went from like thinking that there's no way I'm going to be working from home at all in this crisis to within 24 hours working from home and within a couple days having school canceled. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I don't know. I mean, there's a there's a lot that can happen in that period of time. Um, our governor here in Michigan is talking about potentially ext- extending our stay at home order a little bit longer um, into May, maybe a, a week or two, and, and then starting to loosen it up. So who knows? I mean, there's areas that have not been hit very hard by this. But as soon as you start sending a bunch of people into those areas and moving people around, I mean, then you run the risk. Um, I think potentially of all the sports out there that, that this could work with it's maybe it's ours because so much is done outdoors possibly, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't think the idea of being first is the best idea, but 
who knows? I mean, NASCAR was prepared to race at Atlanta and got sent home a couple hours before the race was supposed to start. So, yeah, that was I, that was one of the egg on your face yep. moments of the yep. season too. And this could be it too. But uh, I don't know. I'll be tuning in if it happens. Yeah, I just you know is the is the risk for disaster worth it? And I understand like. See, that's NASCAR. my argument with the people, and, and I don't want to get political on this podcast, no. but, but that's my argument with the people that are upset about the stay-at-home orders and stuff like that is, like, like I get it. This sucks. It really it does, sucks. Yeah. It sucks for all yeah. of us. There's nobody that this doesn't suck for. But I don't want to rush it either. Yeah. And, like, I'm okay with it sucking a little longer so it doesn't have to suck permanently, yeah. you know? I'm not and, sick and, right now. Nobody in my family is sick so this sucks, but I'm not dealing yeah. with that. If something happens, then I got to deal with, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I know. But at the same but time, I, at some point you got to step out of the bubble and, and, you know, and, and get live things sports, going too. So I don't know. Live sports for, for, you know, in, in the business sense of things, Eric, you and I are still able to make an income by not going anywhere. Right. But NASCAR needs to compete to pay the bills. Yep. And that's that's for the shank sanctioning body itself. It's for the racetracks. It's for the teams. You know, they if they're going to pay the bills, they got to get their sponsors out there. Yep. And who the heck knows what the sponsors are going to even do? Because if you look at a company like Smithfield that fully funds the 10 car, um, they're in trouble right mm-hmm. now. They've got a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, you know, and, well, and a lot of these companies some of these, are for allowing people. And some of these sponsorships have less to do with getting their name out there and more to do with giving their you know, important people in their company, a place to go schmooze with the exactly. NASCAR teams. And if they can't do that, is that, does that sponsorship have the value that it has? I mean, exactly. Yeah. Is it Cessna all... doesn't put their name on a race car because people are buying airplanes because, they, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I understand. Yeah. They don't, sorry guys. Cessna is not catering to the typical NASCAR fan. Yeah. It's about yeah. the, it's about being able to bring their people to the track and that's, let them be big shots Dow, for a weekend. You know, yeah. that's Dow. You're not going exactly. to you're not going to your grocery store and buying Dow. I mean, right. you're you're buying. I mean, you're buying things that they make. But yeah. when you see the Dow logo, you don't know unless you're from our area where you know we're in Dow country. You don't know what that is, right? You know, so and that's yeah. become a lot of what NASCAR sponsorship is anymore. Is it's the entertainment factor, not the not the getting your name out there factor. The days of putting pure later on a car because you're selling, you know, oil filters is just not, that's it's just good not the thing days. anymore. Yeah. The old GM good wrench. <laughs> yeah. You used yeah. to, you used to come to Michigan and you'd slap Meyer on the side of your car because there are Meyer stores around here and you see a lot less yeah. of that than they, than you used to. So, yeah. Yeah. Or some mellow yellow, some fine, yeah. fine and neat soft drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So, yeah, I man. Don't... I, I, um, I want it back. I do, but I am cautiously like, I don't know if that's such a good idea, you, but there you, is something to be said. If you are the first one, Eric, and if you're the only one out there doing something, yeah, you're going to tick a lot of people off, but at the same time, there's gonna be a lot of eyeballs on you, good or bad. Yep. So, um, you know, usually when NASCAR's in the national spotlight, unfortunately these days it's for bad things, right? You know, the, the last two national stories for NASCAR have been Ryan Newman. Mm-hmm. You no, know, thank God he survived. And Kyle Larson. Yep. So, um, and then there's, you know, trickling in here and, and here and there, but those, those are the last big ones. So hopefully, um, you know, it may, and maybe it is the right decision. I don't, I, I don't think so, but I don't know. Hopeful. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of me that, that bounces back and forth on this thing, James, as you know, and I've talked about on the podcast that, you know, I'm a journalist. I've, I've been living this COVID-19 crap for the entire time, day in and day out, looking at numbers, researching, reading about it. And, you know, it's tough because the numbers are saying one thing, but then at the same time, you do wonder, like, do we really need to be doing what we're doing or are we doing more than we need to be doing? You know, maybe we could go back to, you know, not a normal life, but come go back to some of our normal things and still be okay, but I don't know. Just I I don't I don't like the idea of risking it. I personally, I've always yeah. I've always been a better safe than sorry person. That's kind of my stance on things. So I don't know. It's the problem is is none of us know. Even the experts don't know enough about this. You read know. something new every day. It's something new yeah. every day. You're, we're not going to yeah. know enough about this to know whether we're doing the right thing or not until after it's passed. Yeah. 
You know, we're, we'll know five years from now whether we took the right approach or didn't. But today we're not going to know. And Yeah, and we're, and we're watching. I mean, we're seeing the graphs and things and yeah. numbers are coming down for yeah. us. And that and that's great. And yeah, then you Michigan's read a story. Michigan's not number three anymore. For, yeah, it is good. Deaths, I mean, we're but not for. Yeah, but we're yeah, but we're we're going in the right direction. And then you read an article today that says, well, just wait till this winter. It's going to yeah, come back yeah, worse exactly. than ever. And it's like, oh, my God. Yep. It, you can't escape it. You just no. can't. It's it's it. This is our lives for better or for worse for a little while. What do you think, James? You think we get fans back in the stands at a NASCAR race this year? I don't think this year. Well, I don't think so. Unless unless we get a vaccine, I don't know. I don't know how you can do even if you had instantaneous testing to get people in. I don't know how you can get fans out there. Yeah, it's going to be. It, it's going to be hard. I'm with you. I think it's they're talking about tough. no college football this yeah. coming season already. And it's, I mean, that's in the fall. Yeah. So see, I think that's, I think that's extreme to start canceling fall stuff right now. I know there's a lot of, well, yeah, they're not, they're not canceling it, but they're, they're definitely planning on it. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think you need to wait till, wait till you're a month ahead and then, you know, then start making cancellations. But yeah, I don't know, you know, eventually we'll get through this. And uh, I don't think life will be the same, but hopefully it'll be. It's definitely different. Semi semi normal. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would like to not have to wear masks all the time when I go out, but I'm yeah. I'm okay with it if I have to. It is kind of cool to know that you can live off of a lot of the bare necessities. Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> You know, you go to the grocery store and you have to scavenge a little bit, <laughs> right. but then you can make it work. Like, hey, See, I don't know. Car- I've not, I've not had our local grocery store here has been everything I've wanted is there. I have yeah, not had you, to scavenge for anything. I had to change my body night. wash, James, because they don't have the body wash that I normally <laughs> use. That's, well, that's why. Like, I, I went to a bigger store, um, a Meyer store uh, yesterday, but usually, you know, the store that's in our town is a Spartan store, mm-hmm. and it's not. You know, they're they're kind of on their own, right? Um, so you gotta take what you can get when you, when you order from, from there and it's not pretty. Um, <laughs> and then I went to Meyers yesterday and I, I couldn't find pasta. I was like, that was, a, that was the only thing I couldn't find. I'm like, really? It's the, the pasta. I even got paper towels for God's sake. That's the, that's like gold. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, it's not terrible, but it's definitely weird going into the, going into the stores and doing things like that. Um, especially in our house where I'm the only one who runs. So it's, like, <laughs> you know, it's definitely like I'm getting, I'm more getting used to it now than anything. Yeah. But. <sighs> All right, James, anything else to talk about? I, I, mentioned... I did send you uh, okay. I did send you an article on Facebook. I, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it really quick, but Kenny Schrader and, uh, and Kenny Wallace are going to race this week. Really? Did you see that? Oh yeah. That's, you did send me that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Opening the, uh, I'm opening the article right now in South Dakota, and they've got the they they've got the governor riled up because the local track. Hold on, I'm getting it. Bear with me. Yeah, there's a lot. Should of have had this pulled over this. I should have had this pulled up beforehand. So this this was on the main USA Today feed. There's a picture of Ken Schrader and from his Skull Bandit days, <laughs> right on the front. Nice and current. Yeah, what was that 96 somewhere <laughs> around there? 97. <laughs> Uh, so the, a dirt track in North Sioux City in South Dakota uh, will hold a race on Saturday with a ticket cap of 700 fans for a 4,000 seat venue. Hmm. The governor is mad. <laughs> that's all we got to say. Um, and uh, they're going to try to keep people six feet apart. They're going to try to follow guidelines according to the promoter. See, this is and- how I see NASCAR bringing fans back, by the way. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that they could possibly do it and make it work, but this is the way I could see him do it: is saying, "Okay, we'll let fans in, but we're only going to let you know we're going to fifteen percent capacity." Yeah, I don't know if they can even. Probably not. I don't know. I I don't even know if fans would even start want to show up. Would you want to go to a live event? No. Exactly. Nope. And I ain't flying anytime soon. I'll tell nope. you that. Nope, I have no interest. Like that's what I said. Like you're not gonna I'm, get me around a bunch of yahoos, especially, you know, NASCAR fans. I love you. I love you guys, but a NASCAR race is a rowdy place, man. Oh it's, man, it's a, we just lost all of our. We had we had like seven listeners, James, and they're gone. No, now. I'm just saying it's a rowdy party. You know, <laughs> like you've been, you know what it's like going to a NASCAR yeah, race on a it's, Sunday. It's rowdy nation. It's oh rowdy. wait, that's that's well, good. not that rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> It's the beer drinking rowdy. 
you know, yeah, right. Which is great. That's part of the, it's, that's yeah. the NASCAR atmosphere. People but aren't really caring about social they're distancing. They're not worried at a NASCAR about race. personal space <laughs> at a NASCAR race. No, no, they're by having a good time with their buddies and drinking and carrying on. I mean, that's the way to do it. Can you, can you catch coronavirus from vomit? I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> i have some great i don't even know if the podcast is a great place to talk about drunk nascar fan stories oh. but man that's an episode we had this guy okay so you're gonna start, <laughs> you're gonna get me going so we had this guy that um at uh at mis that we were there i think it was it, we must have been there for friday for qualifying and practice and we're sitting there in the stands and this was back in like the mid nineties. And every time Mark Martin would go by, he'd just yell, Mark Martin, Mark Martin, hold his beer up <laughs> in the air, cheering. So excited. And he, he was by us all weekend long. So the, the, the Bush race the next day, of course, Martin's racing the Bush race, every lap, Mark Martin cheering, holding his beer up Sunday. We get there and we're looking around and he's nowhere to be found. And all of a sudden we look down and he is just laying <laughs> on the ground, in the stands, spread out, completely out cold. He just, he finally had too much Mark Martin. <laughs> it was yeah. so good. And Jack Daniels. Yeah. 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 I took my father-in-law. So well, I guess we'll go story for story on this one. Cause yeah. I've got some, yeah. Um, my, one of my more recent ones, this was, uh, this is, this was, oh, this was the race that Dale Jr. won in the dark night car. Okay. Okay. So. I thought it was a good idea. I'm like, oh, you know, my father-in-law, he's, you know, wasn't my father-in-law at this point, but, you know, we, he got into kind of watching NASCAR with me a little bit because, you know, his, my interest or his interest or whatever. So I'm like, well, hey, I, you know, we'll get you a ticket. We'll go. You know, we'll, we'll take, you know, my wife and we'll go. And and uh, we're walking around the midway and there's this dude and Eric, he could barely, he was barely functioning. <laughs> his buddies were basically like corralling him. It was like five guys. He has he has no shirt on just, you know, I think he had like short shorts. So he was a real character. And these girls walked by younger girls, like in their twenties. And he, <laughs> he looked like a zombie from the walking dead. <laughs> like he just saw a person and he just like, a, you know how the zombies will turn on the walking dead and just start kind of waddling right. towards like <laughs> very slowly. <laughs> and he just turned like a zombie and we were losing it. <laughs> Cause he was just fo- going to start following these girls and his buddies were like, no, no, we gotta, <laughs> gotta keep going this way. And I'm just like, Oh my God, <laughs> that's fantastic. And it was, we went to the midway at nine 30 in the morning. So, <laughs> uh, 2011 Daytona 500 after the race, there was this woman that she passed out standing in line, waiting for the bathroom. And it wasn't passed out cause of heat. It was no. definitely passed out due to alcohol. It had to be basically carried out. It was just, it's like, man, like, I don't drink, but, like, this is the Daytona 500. Would oh, you I want to remember it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <sighs> I guess if you've been to a few of them, maybe not. I maybe. Don't know. I, I guess to some people I, it's just a race, but. I sat behind a biker one year <laughs> at MIS, and this had to be early 2000s probably. And uh, he had Dale Earnhardt tattoos, and he must have crashed his bike because he had road rash <laughs> all over his body, and his back was so bad that he scraped the th- <laughs> he scraped the three off of his shoulder plate. Oh God! <laughs> and you can see the outline of the three, and I'm just like, oh my God! And he, of course, he's not wearing a shirt, and uh, you know his his gal who's with him is continuously <laughs> rubbing like. Oh, alcohol or whatever on his body. Now it's just like, oh my God, where did this guy get these tickets? <laughs> um, oh, on, a, on a new tangent here, Earnhardt fans, man, I loved Earnhardt fans. So I don't remember what year it was, but the it was we were there for qualifying back when qualifying was a thing and people actually cared and they came on on qualifying day to watch it. And Earnhardt went to go out for qualifying, and he made it about maybe thirty feet. And the car shut off and that place just went wild. It was so, it was, it was like, I don't know, man. It was like Dale jr. Just won the Daytona 500. People were cheering so much. Yeah, it it was great. He blew an oil pump belt is what happened. And then of course everybody was making fun of it all weekend long at the campground across the street from the track. But of course the Earnhardt fans were great because like 
most people go to a race and if their driver crashes out, they're disappointed, but they still enjoy the race. Earnhardt yeah. fans, man, Earnhardt went the one race. He crashed out about halfway through the race at MIS. And I swear half the people in our section of the stands left. Everybody oh yeah. That, that shirt, happened with left. Dale Jr. Fans too. Just at, at one time. <laughs> it's crazy. When, uh, I, two Dale Jr. Stories. One was when I was at the 2013 Daytona 500, mm-hmm. he got the biggest cheer because he made a run. If you remember how that race played out, he made a run on the last lap to get to Jimmy and pretty much dang near won the thing. He came from like 10th to second mm-hmm. and uh, he needed, I, if he would have had one more lap, he would have won that Daytona 500. And he got the loudest cheer for that run that I've ever so, well, it's the second loudest cheer I've ever heard because I was in the stands, as I mentioned, for Dale Jr.'s Dark Knight win. I'm so disappointed I wasn't there for that. Just and to experience I, the insanity. Holy, I have never, and it won't. Ha- it probably won't happen again in my lifetime. I have never seen anything like it. It was just pandemonium in the stands. I thought the stands were coming down. <laughs> and we sat, you sat where I used to sit, and mm-hmm. we sat at the very tippy top and – pretty you know pretty close to the tippy top and holy crap dude it was coming down and i was i was pissed because yeah. stewart was second that day <laughs> that's why i wanted stewart to get that win so bad i but, stood, yeah pandemonium. pandemonium i stood at the fence at as uh kyle bush came down at chicago land after he beat larson the slide job oh. the slide job race so hold on it slide eric <laughs> Can we, can, are we allowed to use slide job anymore? I don't is know. that like, are we, is that fired by association? I don't know why. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to make light of a really ugly situation. <laughs> probably not, the, probably not my best move. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, we, I was, I was at the fence when Kyle Bush pulled up and pulled the, the water, crybaby, the water bag out of his crotch. And yeah, I did the crybaby in the camera. And I was scared for my life down there, man, with all the all the Kyle Bush haters booing him. It was so loud. It was it was wonderful, though. Just wonderful. Uh, so great to be right yeah. there. I got it on video. I, I'll have to look back and maybe if I find it, I've got it on video somewhere. I'll have to look it up. Uh, I've got I think I've got that Dale Jr. race on camera from the stands. That would be one to share. Because, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it was crazy. It was just absolutely crazy. Yeah, the, he, was, um, he was in the running for my Daytona 500 and then wrecked in one of the green-white checkers on the back yeah. stretch. I think, you know, the, the thing with Dale Jr., he could have won any race, but um, that day, that was a long drought. Wasn't that the four-year drought or yeah, something? Yeah, I think that was the big one for him. Yeah, he, had won, he hadn't won since 08, I think, or whatever. And that and was, was the fuel long. mileage race, right? Not the one he beat Stewart. Yeah, he, he did win the fuel mileage race at Michigan in 08. That He did okay. win that one. Yeah, okay. but the the, the Dark Knight one. one. No, the Dark Knight one. He just kicked everybody's butt at the at the end of the race. That's right. Um, and yeah, it took it basically took it from Stewart, which I was so mad that I was so mad, and it was such a cool. And I couldn't even be mad because it was such a cool moment to be there. Right. Oh, you were mad. You're a Dale Jr. hater. We all know it. James. I know. I know. I know. We know it. I know. I know. That came back to haunt me just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay, if you haven't listened to that podcast, that's a that's a good one. Man, every time I so I'm going on Instagram trying to find my shout out, and every time I go on Instagram and Baron Speedway pops up, I have to look at it twice and t- determine whether it's a real yeah, photo. Yeah, he's caught me a couple times. Yeah. Man, he's doing some cool stuff. He's building a grandstand now, guys. It's it's great. Really good yeah. stuff. He's got a great he picture quit. up here of uh Jordan Anderson and uh Grand Enfinger racing through the turn, and it just looks like the real thing. Yeah, he's relentless. Yeah, he is. Quarantine is probably the best thing that happened to him. Yeah, probably... <laughs> that is true. That is true. He's cranking, he's cranking out the content. <laughs> um, James, you got any shout outs this week? First of all, did I miss anything? Are we, are, are, I we got everything good. covered? Uh, if you guys missed good. it, I, I made the announcement earlier. We got today. Jeff Gordon is racing this weekend at Talladega. Yeah. I'm out of retirement. It's worth a watch. Check it out. Just yep. Jeff Gordon's going to gonna turn on the box. Yep. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got. Yep. I'm pretty curious to actually see how he does. He probably hasn't played video games in how many years? 20? It's probably uh, – he has no reason to be racing, eye racing. Yeah. I don't think he'll do very well. He pro- he might do better than Boyer. Probably. It doesn't Boyer's- take <laughs> Boyer has been pretty Boyer's bad. Been pretty, yeah, Boyer has been noticeably, noticeably pretty bad. I wonder if Boyer won't race this weekend. Then, if Boyer is going to sit in the in, <laughs> in Gordon's seat, because Boyer seemed to really enjoy that last week when he crashed out and got to sit there and just watch the race. 
Well, who gets the 24 car then? Does Byron get to keep well, that's the 24? I'm wondering if, if Gordon jumps in the 14. Or is that's Jeff going to drive though. the 88? Yeah, he can't drive a Ford. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what they'll do. Maybe they'll put him well, in. Well, he could. I guess Jeff could drive a Ford. Hey, actually, somebody somebody tweets here on uh, on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, Jeff Gordon Webb, what number are you using on Sunday? Got a pretty good non used not used lately idea, and it's a picture of the sixty seven Outback car from Jeff Gordon's <laughs> Bush days. That's a good one. <laughs> a really good one. Yeah. The four. <laughs> could he run the forty <laughs> two? <laughs> Just, nice. you know, with the Hendrick style numbers. How great would it be if Gordon ran? Here's a picture of somebody. Somebody tweeted. How great would it be to see him run the uh, the T-Rex car? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> that would Such look a good. Great paint scheme. I would love that. I'm not going to find this guy that I want to shout out today because um, Instagram sucks and doesn't lay these out in the order that you followed them. So. I want to shout out, it's not any one person in particular, but the people who do the custom die casts on Instagram and they take pictures. Yeah. Um, dude, some of those, like, they do race win versions and the fenders are all flared out. And mm-hmm. I'm like, holy cow, you guys put a lot of time into these things. And then there's the guys who do, like, the fantasy die casts. So, like, it'll be, like, Tony Stewart's silver Home Depot car on a Camaro body. And stuff like that. And I just think that stuff like always catches my eye whenever I'm scrolling through and Instagram knows that I like these things. Right. And it sprinkles them in across the, you know, I don't follow most of these people, but sprinkles them in in the search and I can't stop looking at that kind of stuff. And it always catches my eye. The paint schemes, you know, there's a guy, there's a guy on there who does like fantasy paint schemes on new, on new, on uh, like new models of, of stuff. And that's just fantastic. Yeah, I've seen some really good ones. Um, I somebody just auctioned off a um, Kurt Busch Kentucky win from last year, and I was of course at that race, covered that race. Oh and yeah, man, it was tempting. I I, I missed uh, getting a that's ticket. That's a cool. For it. That's a cool race car. Yeah, the uh, all black number one. Yeah, I just like the idea of um, you know of uh, just having the race win cars for the races that I've gone to. It'd be pretty cool. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't gone to enough to where it's necessary for me to think. I think you and I both got you and I both got one for the of the smaller diecast. Yeah, we got one sixty four scales of we uh, won't name names. A former NASCAR Cup Series driver. I've got the burnt rubber off the track from that race, too. Nice. I've got I did try to bring home some um, some uh, confetti from Victory Lane. A couple one of the races last season that didn't hold up well in my bag, though. It wasn't anything special. It was just regular confetti. So, yeah, I'm not I gonna, I'm gonna find this guy. Damn it! I really want. I, gra- I grabbed a handful of grass from the Daytona infield. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I still. So I want to see how they do the designs in the Daytona infield. I know that there's ways you do it with like using a a, a roller to roll the grass a certain direction, but I, I don't. I don't think that's how they do it there. It's got to be some sort of a computer animated. It looks like they like Roomba or something, right? See, I sat down and I'm like pulling the the grass out to see if there's paint in it. <laughs> like, did they paint the whole grass? But no, they I didn't. I didn't go that deep. I know. I I just grabbed we, some grass. We were we were had the the infield pass for um, Friday night or Friday, and there was a long period of time between the truck introductions and when you go back across the track to your, to your seats and we were just dead from walking all day. So we were sitting there in the grass and I was pulling grass out left and right looking at it. It's like, is there green paint on here or what? But remember when we were at Eldora, was it the first time we were walking the track? Do you remember that? No, it had to be the second time we were down there. What, what is there more to the story? Was... Cause no, but when, when did we, Oh, when we got to actually go out, yeah, remember we were walking the track. We were just out there on the track, walking around. I don't know. I remember, I got that awesome picture. It was just nobody was out there. It was just me and you, and I took a picture in the track. It's basically a quiet track, right? And it goes all the way around the front stretch. It's probably my favorite picture I've ever taken. Yeah, that. Uh... And we were we were mucking around on the Eldora dirt, and I was just like, "Holy crap, this is sweet." That was like the second or third year that they let us do the garage tour. 
Yeah, it had to be the second year, right? It had yeah. to be the second year. The first year, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. No. We were just excited to, to be down Nobody there. knew what they were doing the first year. No, the se- it had to be the second year because remember we were in the pits and Smoke was riding around in the four-wheeler just buzzing by us, and we were like, what the heck is going yeah. on? Cole Custer was down there, and um, God, Larson was running. We had – that was the Brad Keselowski race, I think. Yep, yep you're right. And you the know, Dillons. I, I, it, was, it was interesting because we saw that – we thought that Keselowski ran Michigan license plates on his truck because he's from Michigan, but it turns out all the Ford, all the Fords do. Yeah. NASCARs cars have, I did not know that until. Yeah. The just recently. guys do it too. Yep. 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 Yeah. Those were fun times. We, we should have a podcast where we just tell stories. We've got some stories, man. We got some good ones. Yep. Agreed. They're not, they're not Ryan McGee stories, <laughs> but they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we may have to turn to that here. Um, I mean, we're already doing it a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to do the shout out I was going to do because, so there's this guy that made a replica of his home racetrack, um, like Baron Speedway or whatever. It's, it's a, it's a diorama type thing. Um, and I wanted to shout him out, but I can't find it. So I'll, I'll try and find it for next week and I'll shout it out next week. But since we were talking about the race win die casts and stuff like that, um, race car graveyard. Is, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a yep. good feed. Uh, he collects NASCAR diecasts. He's a custom builder of diecasts. Um, his stuff is good. If you want to check it out, uh, Race Car Graveyard on um, on Instagram. He's got all kinds of cool stuff. He's not putting them out in the yard anymore, is he? As uh, far from what I can tell, I don't think he's so. Been doing no. He originally when I first saw Race Car Graveyard, he was taking diecasts apart like they were wrecked, and he was sticking them in his, sticking them in his backyard. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, since I've been following him, he's just been doing the race, the like race win cars and stuff like that. The replicas yeah. of different damaged cars and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's fascinating. I almost spent the money on a um, custom die cast of Austin Dillon's car from the Pepsi 400 or Coke 400 when he went in the fence at Daytona. Oh, my Cause God. Because there were a couple of really good ones. And it's like, man, I want that car, but I don't know why. <laughs> the hell am i gonna do with that but I uh, but i wanted one so hell man just just go buy one for yourself you can probably get them on the discount rack and then drag it behind your car yeah exactly for a while. exactly yeah, it'll, that'll, that'll customize it for you there were a couple good custom ones that were like legit right down to the wheel that was left and the fender it was it was good stuff i'm looking at race car graveyard really quick because i'm scrolling way back in time because he's but yeah you're right he's been doing more of the custom stuff lately my cousin had a, you know, back when models were a thing, um, he had a model of a Jeep and he took a lighter and stuff and like made this thing like it'd been through the trails, put dents and stuff in it and had mud and like marks and stuff and had it like beat up. And I always wanted to do something like that because it just was so cool. And I remember I had a, I built a model of an ASA car way back. And I had it forever and then finally decided it was, it was starting to come apart. I was going to toss it and it's like, you know, I'm going to take a lighter to it and see if I can do this. Nah, I just lit it on fire. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. So I just threw it away. I used to take my little die cast and put it in my grandpa's vice grip and rip the fenders off. Yeah, I did have, uh, yeah. I, I had a set of old die casts that I would, I'd smash with a hammer and then use them for my monster truck cars, the crushed cars. There you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. that's See, that's another one of my dreams. So these guys are building these track dioramas, and that's that's super cool to me. I've always wanted to do that. I also want to build, like, the floor of a Monster Jam arena <laughs> and just have, like, a 164-scale Monster Jam arena set up. Heck, yeah. But I have a lot of these dreams that just they require you to actually do work, and I don't like to do that. So... <laughs> <laughs> So I was doing a quick little bit of research. So if you do go to a race car graveyard, go uh, back to like 2018. You can see all of his cars laying in his backyard. Nice. I'll have to go back. I've never gone back that far. Yeah. Sc- give it a, give it a long scroll, but yeah. One more shout out guys. Cause it, it's been a couple of weeks since I shouted out Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr. On Twitter is just the greatest thing ever. So I have, there's a picture here where NASCAR legends tweeted out a picture of Robert Yates a couple of days ago. Um, it would have been his 77th birthday. And in the picture, it's Robert Yates and Larry McReynolds standing inside the car, Davy, Davy Allison's car. Next oh, that's to the a good motor. picture. Yeah, and, that's a good picture. And here's Davy with his foot up on the front fender of the car and his knees like way too high. His helmet's sitting on his knee. It looks really awkward. So junior retweets it. And his comment is Davy has that look like 
put my foot up here because I thought it would look cool and it's up here way too high and now I'm committed. <laughs> 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 it's so good. Um, Dale Jr. is the ultimate Twitter troll. So, <laughs> yep. Thoughts of a real NASCAR driver and what they go through. There you go. Yep, yep. I love it. Uh, with that, James, anything else before we head on out of here? Oh, I think that was good ramblings. Yeah, for, we managed uh, to stretch it out to normal length by uh, rambling for a half hour. So how we do it. <laughs> Is it anybody, if anybody's still here, still listening at this point, where they can, where can they find you on social media? If they want to talk to you during week, James at James Cush on Twitter, you can find me at T super speedway Twitter. I've been a little bit more active on there lately than normal. Um, you can find the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. Our website is the super speedway.com. You can find uh, the show notes, links to the articles we discussed, um, past coverage of races, all that sort of thing. So check that out, thesuperspeedway.com. You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and SoundCloud, wherever you found us today. We hope you subscribe. We'll still be here throughout this uh, this quarantine until we get back to real racing, and then we'll be back here every week to talk about real stuff. So hopefully sooner than later, but hopefully not too soon. Um, if you want to become a part of the show, help us out, uh, or show us your support, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash thesuperspeedway. We step back in time this weekend at Talladega Super Speedway, the virtual Tal- Talladega Super Speedway, with Jeff Gordon retor- returning to action. Um, you know, it's the only way, way you're going to get to see Jeff Gordon race again. So at least we got eye racing. Um, back to Talladega this weekend. We'll be back next week to talk about it and uh, rip on it and all that stuff. Uh, we'll be back here just to try and keep a little bit of normalcy in your lives. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. We'll <laughs>